is the story of the Ground Observer Corps of the Aircraft Warning Service. It may be a long story, or it may be a short one. That depends on how soon we lick them. We hope it'll be a short one. But if it's long, we'll be in it at the end, just as we were at the beginning. By the time we had started, late in 1941, the world had gotten a lot of packets of bad news from bombers, like this stuff here. They'd been getting it in Hong Kong, in Chongqing, in London, in Coventry, in Warsaw, mostly in cities or industrial districts, but with plenty of schoolhouses and churches thrown in. When we started, our towns were still all in one piece, and we weren't exactly at war yet, but we were getting madder and madder. Also, we figured that sooner or later, this might be the kind of a war you'd want to get in, considering the type of people who were on the wrong side. Some of us at the time were looking up, but all we saw were our own planes. At least we thought they were our own, but we could have been wrong as well as not, as we found out later. Some of us, a few thousand or not very many in a country of millions, decided to be sure, just in case. The Army began it pretty much like this in the Board of Supervisors' office. They found out that all you had to do was ask and you got it. The uh, various fighter commands of the Army Air Forces all over the country are sending out a call for thousands of civilian volunteers. We're forming the Ground Observer Corps of the Aircraft Warning Service. It's a matter for every patriotic citizen. Now, these ground observers will work directly with the Air Forces and will contribute greatly to the efficiency of the fighter commands. His job, or her job, will be to detect all aircraft flying within a designated area and then report to a filter center where the progress of the plane will be displayed and tracked. Isn't this a little premature? We're not at war. Not yet. And we certainly hope we won't be. But these men and women will be trained during maneuvers or war games. We intend to be prepared for whatever happens. Well, Major, if the Army needs volunteers from this county, we'll see that it gets them. Good. Now, here's the procedure. First, you appoint a district director, a man well known in your community, and one who has a certain amount of executive ability. The asking went right on down the line, like in here. It was wonderful. The more you ask, the more you got. Ed, you're president of the Kiwanis Club and past commander of the American Legion. You're well known and well liked in this community. In short, you're just the man the Army wants. What? Brother, you've got a new job, a full-time job without pay, as district director of the Army Air Force's Ground Observer Corps. Well, I'll take the job if I can handle it. You can handle it. First, you must select supervisors for each area in your district. Men that you can, you can trust to uh, organize the uh, personnel of the observation posts. All the observers couldn't be in the city, so the district directors hit the road. Hiya, Ed. What are you doing this far away from your store? Getting people in the army, Ray. Wait a minute. How about starting from the beginning? OK. The beginning is that you're a supervisor in the Ground Observation Corps. Huh? And the first thing for you to do is to select a chief observer for each post. Oh. And after them, the area supervisors went right out into the tall corn, found all kinds of people willing to keep their heads up for their country. Good afternoon, Mrs. Tucker. Say, you're a stranger, Ray Harper. Come on in and sit down. Thanks, I can't stay. I've got too many calls to make. Emma, the Ground Observer Corps of the Army Air Forces wants to use your house as an observation post. Holy cats! You were gonna be in the Army, Mr. Harper? You can if your mother says yes, Jimmy. Oh, Ma, you ain't gonna keep us out of the Army, are you? Not if I can help it. But what can we do? Well, you can be Chief Observer, and Jimmy can be the Assistant Chief. You will phone a report on all planes flying over your farm. Oh, boy! That's for me. I'll start right now. Mm -hmm. You've got one good man already. <laughs> Emma, you're quite far from your neighbors here, but maybe the nearest ones will volunteer as observers. We aren't in the war yet, but should we be, we want to be able to do our work and know how to do it. We'll handle it, Ray. That's what they all say around here. You know, this country is full of Americans. Sure, the country was full of Americans. A good many of them by now had field glasses in their hands and permanent cricks in their necks. 
The Army was holding maneuvers, and they were looking up and writing in their log books and getting used to their jobs. It still seemed all in fun, because in Washington were a pair of accomplished, undersized liars who were saying that everything was going to be just swell. Gentlemen, you all know how difficult my mission is. But I'll do all I can to make it a successful one for the sake of two countries, Japan and the United States. On December 7th, the bandits came in full force over Hawaii and left a whole bunch of early Christmas gifts. They're going to get back with interest. A lot of us were stunned, of course, and horrified. But the best part about the Ground Observer Corps was that it had set itself to take a punch, so it didn't have to duck this one. Hello. Yes, this is Randall. What? All right. All right, my district will be on the job in five minutes. I'll be there in five minutes. Yes, we know. We heard it on the radio. We're already activated. None of us quite realized then how well this outfit was set up. But the fact is that a few hours after Pearl Harbor, the whole outskirts of America were filled with people waiting for some more of the samurai to come back and get their blocks knocked off. They were on tops of buildings downtown and hanging to cliffs up in the mountains, and out on the desert, where you had to climb a pole to plug in your telephone line. In the middle of factory districts, where it was more than likely they'd come to drop their stuff. And in every other place you can imagine, high up, low down, noisy and quiet, easy and hard. They were a pretty varied bunch, too, because patriots don't come all in one pattern. They came from the lifted pinky set that said Army Flash with a broad A. Some of the ladies didn't have nurses, so they brought their babies along. And a lot of the guys who held those field glasses had calloused hands. Some of us were farmers who dropped a pitchfork to pick up a phone. And our wives were with us. We even had blind men who could hear plane motors better than the people who could see. And yes, even dogs. It was a sort of a motley outfit just the kind you get from a free country. It was all for nothing, and they were glad to do it. And they meant business. It wasn't their fault that they didn't get a chance to show their stuff right away. They could have done it all right. Time went by, and nothing happened. It was tough to just sit and watch, sometimes seeing no planes and never seeing anything but your own. But these people were in business which is something they figured our enemies wouldn't be after a while. You remember the Tuckers. Well, they had quite a little setup now with a fancy observation post and everything. Here's your breakfast, Pa. Say, ain't it about time for my relief ship? Where's that Jimmy boy? Oh, I thought I'd let him sleep an extra few minutes on Sunday morning. Yeah. Things have changed a lot since we first started the Ground Observer Corps out here, haven't they, Paul? Yeah. I can remember when I used to get all the sleep I wanted. It's worth doing without a little sleep to think that nobody can roam around up there without the rest of us down on the ground knowing about it. It seems like half the county's in this. Over there, six miles are the Johnsons. And six miles beyond them, the Forbes. And six miles further on, the Blakes. It rings the whole United States, Pa. We're organized. Yeah, and sleepy, too. There it is, Pa. Army flash. Army, go ahead, please. After the ground observer picks up his phone, says army flash, and tells his story to a woman in the filter center, his job is done. Of course, the job down there is just starting. It's a big room with a map of the whole area, a lot of telephones, target stands, and plenty of fast, precise work. 
It may seem confusing to you looking at it this way, but don't be fooled by it. Here's where all the loose ends are gathered up and tied into a neat bow. Every airplane in the air is tracked on that board. It's tracked because the ground observers are constantly calling in. They're the base of the whole business, and without them, it couldn't function. These customers coming in above the belt of clouds were noticed by a lot of people. They kept on following the flight across the country from their observation posts. And in the filter center, a woman was giving the flight a number and putting it on a target stand. The target had an exact duplicate next door to the filter room in a place called the operations room. The board is the same, the work the people do is much the same. But here is the real brains of the whole system. Here they have to make up their minds on what's going to happen after the ground observer has done his job. They have a controller to run the place and a whole bunch of officers to help him. Uh, training center, how about target 13? Target 13 is not trainers. Target 13, not bomber. Target 13, negative to Navy. CAA. We have no flight plan on target 13. Now the controller has all the information he can get on those planes wandering up above the clouds. The ground observers are still following it, but the controller hasn't got much time. It doesn't take long for an airplane to get somewhere. Make target 13 enemy. 13 enemy. 13 enemy. Alert your fighters. Yes, sir. FCC, I want radio silence, entire wing area. CARW, I want yellow warning, entire wing area. Roger. Yellow alert, entire wing area. Yellow alert, entire wing area. Yellow warning. Yellow warning. Yellow warning. Yellow warning. CAA, cut out your beacons. Silence your beams. Suspend all non-tactical flying in zones A, B, and C. That's correct. Thank you. Any aircraft? Yes, sir. Place your guns in X status. Roger. Fighter, scramble Lily Squadron from Potter. Yes, sir. another room back at the filter center, an intercept room. The people in here work directly with the fighter plane squadron, plotting a course that will bring them into the quickest possible contact with the enemy. Hello, Lily 1-1. This is Dublin 1. Vector 2-2-0. Now. Roger. It's embarrassing to pat ourselves on the back again, but they couldn't do it without the constant flow of reports from the little guys with binoculars in their hands. With all us tipsters spotted around the country, you can see what the conclusion of this is going to be. Hello, Lily 1-1. One, one. This is Dublin 1. Repeat vector 8-0 for one minute and orbit. Roger. The enemy runs right into the local boys. Lily 1-1 one, one to regional control. Go ahead, Lily. Target sighted. Target sighted. Lily 1-1 one, one, attacked by ships of two elements. Do not fight. 
fire. Do not fire. Our ships. Our ships. Sir, interception completed. Target 13 identified by fighters as trainers off course. Lily is leading them back. Make 13 trainers. Well, it turned out all right. It always has so far, and we hope it will keep on being that way. But in case it doesn't, you don't need to worry. We will be there like we've been from the start, watching 24 hours a day. Nobody flies up there that we don't know about it. And if the planes happen to be enemy, it will be known in plenty of time. Time for you to take your kids to a shelter for the police and fire departments to get ready, for the workers and the plants to get undercover, and for more anti-aircraft guns and airplanes than they ever saw before to get on their necks. We're the only stool pigeons that are well-liked, and we're friendly, too. If you want to come in, you're welcome. All you have to do is keep your chin up. There it is, Pa.